Non, mais il dégueule pas vraiment. Hello everybody and welcome to Wine on Main TV. I'm your host Eric Tanzi. Um, we're in our beautiful wine shop in downtown Clayton. Today we're going to be talking about old world wines and new world wines. Our wine of the weeks uh, this week is Racina Cabernet from Paso Robles and then we're also doing an old world wine of the week, um, Le Jeunesse from uh, Cote d'Or France. Sorry I don't speak French um, so my wife's probably going to be pretty upset that I just butchered that name but it's again from the Cote d'Or. Um, but the point of the Wine of the Week this week is that we are talking about Old World and New World wines and why it's so important for you to know the difference between the two so that when you go to your local wine shop you can make the absolute best decision when purchasing your bottles of wine. So Old World and New World is simply just this, that Old World wines are wines that come from wine regions that have a very well documented history of growing wines. So uh, France, Italy, Spain, uh, Greece. These wine, these wine countries have been making wine for thousands of years. Uh, your New World wines, simply exactly what it sounds like, New World. Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 to the New World. So New World wines being the United States, South America, Argentina, uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and, and New, World, New World countries. Wines that, countries that have been making wines for maybe hundreds of years versus thousands of years. And so the styles are very different. With Old World wines, Old World wines, a lot of their countries are... are um, governed by very strict wine laws, um, wine laws that uh, dictate what kind of grapes have to be grown in a certain region, what kind of grapes can be blended with other grapes, um, how much barrel aging wines have to go through and bottle aging, um, and so on. So uh, old world wines are a really good representation of the terroir that they're growing in. Terroir meaning, again, the land, uh, the climate, and the region that the, the, wine, the, uh, the vines are grown in. Your new world wines are uh, a little bit more... Um, a representation of the winemaker's ability because they aren't bound by these wine laws, so they can grow whatever grapes they really want, and they can blend those grapes with whatever they want, they can blend vintages, um, they can uh, you know mess around with bottle aging and barrel aging and what kind of uh, oak barrels that they use. So really, your New World wines are a representation of the winemaker's uh, creativity. Um, and both these wines, Old World and New World wines, uh, are for two specific occasions, I think. Um, typically, now we're just stereotyping again, but your old world wines are really, really great with food. So if you're if you're out eating and you're having dinner, um, think if you're making French food, maybe French wine, if you're doing Italian food, Italian wine, uh, so on and so forth. And if you're just drinking on the back porch with your friends, uh, you might want to try something new world. And that's, again, just a very generalized uh, statement there. Not that you can't pair new world wines with food, because that's just absolutely not true. Um, and just like you can't drink old world wines with just your friends, that's absolutely not true. But again, the styles are, your old world wines are typically going to be more earthy, more, uh, more of a representation of the terroir, and your new world wines are going to be more fruit driven, more fruity, and a representation of the style of the winemaker. So, the reason why we've chosen these two bottles of wine for our wine of the week is because, well, they're just excellent representations of new world and old world. Um, so the Racina is from Paso Robles, California. Uh, it's Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, the taste characteristics on the Racina are very lush berries, uh, very, very fruit forward, uh, black currant, um, pair very well with, I think, a London broil with a wine reduction and a mushroom, uh, mushrooms over the top. That's uh, actually what I had with this wine not too long ago. Um, and a, the, um, the Cote de Rhone from France, I think it pairs very well with all sorts of fish. Um, I recently just made some fish tacos with some amberjack, and I thought this wine went really well with that. So, um, really, really fun and interesting wines. Come on down to the shop, try this out. You've got to buy an old world wine, buy a new world wine, try these two out. These are a perfect example of the two difference in styles and just kind of play around with it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I recommend maybe having a friend over, uh, a couple, couple friends over, and just try, open up a new world wine when they get there, and then when you sit down for dinner, try to pair an old world wine with the, the dinner that you're cooking. It's a, a lot of fun. Again, we're located in downtown Clayton, North Carolina. Come and check us out, Wine on Main. Until next time, friends. Cheers. Cheers.